Why Fish Don't Exist, A Story of Loss, Love, and the Hidden Order of Life by Lulu Miller is a woven tapestry of memoir, biography, and philosophical reflection centered around the premise that what we perceive as order in the natural world is often an illusion. Miller uses the life of the obscure 19th century scientist David Starr Jordan as a backbone for exploring her own life's tumults and the human quest to find meaning amid chaos. David Starr Jordan was an ichthyologist, educator, and staunch believer in the enduring nature of order. He was a prominent figure in the early days of Stanford University, serving as its first president. His significant accomplishment as a scientist was the classification of thousands of species of fish, demonstrating an unshakable confidence in the orderliness of nature, despite his collection being destroyed multiple times by catastrophic events including the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Jordan's resilience and determination to rebuild his collection after each destruction symbolizes a deeper human compulsion to impose order and create systems even when faced with the ultimate disarray. Throughout her book, Miller parallels the story of Jordan and his quest to catalog fish with her investigation into why the category of fish itself, as Jordan conceived it, does not actually exist in a strictly scientific sense. Recent analyses in taxonomy and genetics have revealed that many creatures we collectively refer to as fish are not as closely related as previously thought, which undermines the foundation of Jordan's life's work. This scientific twist becomes a central metaphor for Miller as she grapples with her own experiences of disillusionment and disorder. Miller's narrative weaves in and out of her personal life recounting her struggles with mental health, her family's battles with depression, and the breakup of a significant romantic relationship. These stories of pain and disconnection are interspersed with her meditations on chaos and order. She identifies with Jordan's tenacity, understanding his relentless pursuit of scientific order as a coping mechanism for the chaos he faced, both personally and professionally. In her quest for stability, Miller is drawn to the teachings of Jordan, who held the belief that there is an order to life that can be discerned and cataloged. But as the story unfolds, Miller begins to question whether this rigid adherence to order is beneficial or if it masks a darker side to Jordan's character. It is revealed that Jordan was a proponent of eugenics and that his search for order in nature extended to human society, a pursuit with sinister implications. Miller uses this revelation to reflect on the ways in which the search for order can lead to ethical blindness and to question the personal and societal structures she has taken for granted. Miller also delves into philosophical questions about our existence and the human need to find patterns and connections. With Jordan's story as a backdrop, she leads readers on an introspective journey, examining how humans have historically sought to control the inexplicable whether through science, religion, or personal narrative. In her struggle to find meaning in chaos, Miller encounters numerous scientists and thinkers who have contributed to the ongoing debate about order versus disorder. She reflects on the writings of Charles Darwin, who introduced the idea of natural chaos through the theory of evolution, and on the words of other disruptive thinkers who challenged established scientific ideas. As a sort of philosophical resolution to the dichotomy between order and chaos, the book circles back to the concept of fish, or the lack thereof, as a central theme. Miller reaches a point of acceptance that life is often messier and more complex than strict classifications or hierarchies can accommodate. This epiphany helps her come to terms with her own personal upheavals and fosters a sense of peace with the uncertainties and unpredictabilities of life. However, Rather than capitulating to nihilism in the face of life's chaos, Miller draws inspiration from nature's resilience and the ways in which life adapts to adversity. She encapsulates this notion through the regenerative capabilities of certain species of fish, which can rebuild parts of themselves that have been damaged, serving as a metaphor for personal and emotional rebuilding. In the final act of her narrative, Miller emphasizes that instead of seeking to dominate or fully understand the chaos, there is a need to cultivate a delicate balance between order and disorder. She proposes finding solace in the unknown and embracing uncertainty as a fertile ground for growth and transformation. 
Through her exploration of Jordan's life, Miller discerns that while his work to classify fish may have been flawed or even misguided, his innate desire to make sense of the world is inherently human. In contrast to Jordan's folly of imposing rigid structures on nature, Miller advocates for a softer approach, suggesting that one can find beauty and meaning in nature's intrinsic chaos without the need to force it into boxes or categories. In summary, why fish don't exist serves as both a narrative and a contemplation on life's intricacies. It tells the story of a historical figure who sought to bring order to nature, examines the destructive tendencies of such rigid classification, and explores the personal journey of the author as she confronts her own disorder. Miller, through engaging storytelling and philosophical inquiry, invites readers to consider the beauty of life's imperfections and the liberating potential of embracing the chaos in which we all swim. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.